Hey there friends, Nibs again. I'm gonna get down in the garage and do a little plinking today. The weather outside is not really uh, too, too pleasant for getting out and shooting. It's very windy and it's spitting and sputtering. Every once in a while you'll see a few snowflakes coming down out of the sky and some rain every now and then. Um, so it's what we call around here a raw day. And it's in the, I think it's right around 40 degrees. Um, and dropping down into the 30s every once in a while so we'll keep it inside for today but uh, I've got a really neat head-to-head -head for you guys uh, in this video and uh, this is one um, I have a, a 22 and a 177 we're gonna put up against each other but these are uh, very much alike uh, besides the caliber um, so the first one actually belongs to me uh, it's one I picked up recently um, just finished doing a reseal job on it and uh, it's shooting very nicely now, uh, very well, I guess I should say. And this is a Crossman Model 147, which is the .177 version of this older style pump-up rifle. <clears throat> and then this other one, which is on loan to the channel currently, is a Model 140, which is a 22 caliber, same same gun, same mechanism as the other one. So this one, the 22 caliber version, they actually made this from the early 50s, like 1953, 54, uh, all the way up until 1968, according to Crossman's website. And they actually had a couple of different variations. This is, happens to be the older variation version um, where it has the stamped sheet metal uh, trigger guard and then the through the stock safety like that. The other one, the .177 version, they only made that for like one or two years, 63 to, into 64, according to Crossman's website. Um, and that one also has this cross bolt safety. So they're, they're both pretty comparable as far as vintage goes as well. So we're gonna just shoot these across the garage. I'm gonna be shooting offhand, so there's a lot of me in the uh, the error that we may see in the shots, but that uh, that's how I do my head-to-heads mostly. Eh, sometimes I do them off a of bench rest, but these ones uh, were intended to be plinkers. So for the 22, I'm going to be shooting these rifle uh, cutters, and they are a pretty hefty 16.5 grain pellet. And then for the .177, I'm going to be shooting these little Diablo Basics, RWS Diablo Basics, and these ones are seven greens. So those pellets I'm shooting on the 22 are more than twice the weight of the .177. So anyway, so we'll shoot the 22 first. We'll shoot that one at the left-hand target downrange. I do have a... So this one I got uh, on loan, like I said. And uh, it was not, it was pumping up, but it was, I could hear air blowing by as I was pumping. So um, I did have a spare pump cup left over from one of my other repairs that I did. And I put that one in there and now the gun, the rest of the gun's in perfect shape, working shape and uh, working great. So, but uh, we'll go ahead and we'll shoot five shots with this one at the left hand target. We have a camera running down there to record all my misses. And we'll see how we can do. Just like most of the pump up guns that I've tested and, and tried on the channel and, and whatnot, five pumps really seems to kind of be the sweet spot to give you the best accuracy but still have a pretty good punch to it. Same hole. <laughs> and anything above five shots, it really becomes difficult to, to pump that lever. And you really don't gain much as far as power goes. And in some cases, I'm not sure with this gun, but in some cases you actually lose quite a bit of accuracy. Well, 
little off, a little off on that one, but still just about one ragged hole. You can see how hard it, even at five pumps, how hard those the cocking strokes start to get. Um, quite a bit of effort required to close that gun. Um, all right. Got a good looking group going there. One more with the 22. Do want to find one of these? Maybe I'll talk the owner into selling it to me. I'm not sure. This one does look like it's been refinished, so. All right, right in the middle of the whole group of ones that I shot before, so. That's a nice looking group from the 22. Now let's see what the, uh, the 177 will do. The model 147. From what I remember, it shoots just about as good as long as I can do my job. So this one was not holding air at all when I got it. Uh, every, I would get about three pumps in and then you'd start to hear the air bleeding off. Right, so there's five pellets in the tin. After you handle those monstrous 22 pellets, then you try to handle those those little little 177s it's uh, it's a can of a little, little, little bitty toy Crossman really seemed to think that 22s were going to be the way of the the pellet world back in the 50s and 60s for sure. They did not have many offerings in uh, in point one seven seven back in those days. They did have a uh, so I, I have a. Crossman Model 101, which is one of their very earliest pump action uh, air guns. And the 101 is actually a 22 caliber. And they did release that one in the Model 100 as well, which was the .177. That one's very rare. Um, I'm trying to find one of those, but uh, when they do show up on eBay or other places, they're definitely not giving those away. So the, uh, the trigger on this one is a little more gritty. I'm gonna have to take it apart and play around with that a little bit. Makes it a little bit harder to get a really nice squeeze on it and get a, a good accurate group, but not looking too bad, but it kind of looks like the uh, 22 is gonna be taking this one. All right. We're Doing pretty good with both of them then. The, uh, the trigger pull on that 22 is, I don't know if somebody's worked on it or just the way it is, but that one's so much nicer and smoother, it's, it's a lot easier to get a good crisp uh, break on it. This one's got some creep and a little bit of grit, so I'll have to work on that. Well, that's not a terrible group from the old uh, 177, Model 147, but uh, I can tell just by looking from over here that the, uh, the 22 did a much better group. So anyway, that's an easy one for me to call. Um, there we go, my head-to-head -head challenge between the Model 147, which is a .177 caliber pellet rifle made in the early 60s. And then up against the Model 140, which this particular one could have been made as early as 1953 and probably as late as early 60s, 61, 62, somewhere around that time frame. 
I'm not 100% sure when they switched from the <clears throat> from the stamped sheet metal trigger guard up to the, the cast one. Um, if you look back, I've got some videos on a Model 180, and I have two of those. One of them has the older version like this, and the other one I show you has the cast trigger guard, so you'll be able to see what I'm talking about there. But All right, well, I hope you liked the video. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate everybody being on the channel. Uh, you guys are uh, really making it grow good, and I really appreciate that a lot. Until next time, have a great day.